Hello, this is Thomas K4SWL, and if you're new here, I like to do real-time, real-life, no-edit, amateur radio field activation videos, and uh, today is no different, actually, uh, but I am starting this video from my driveway, actually. Um, I've got the car here, and uh, about to head out, and do I'm doing something a little different today. Normally, I don't put a bunch of sections in my videos or anything, but... I'm about to head down the road on the way to Lake James State Park. It's about 9 o'clock a.m. on June 14th. It's a Monday morning, and um, I plan to actually build my antenna in the field. I'm going to do a really, really simple antenna today, um, just a little wire antenna. And we'll see how well the uh, Zygu X5105 uh, can tune it. And uh, this is a really, you know, I have a lot of videos uh, using things like chameleon antennas, pack antennas, par infeds, all those commercially available antennas. But they aren't the only game out there. They're nice. Uh, they're usually built uh, to last. But to be honest, there's much more that you can do just with some simple wire. And up until 2016, I, never, I had never purchased a commercially available field antenna. I always used just my own wire antennas that I would build. And I realized I need to start doing a little bit more of that on the channel because I like promoting that. And um, today is about the most simple, most basic one. We're going to hopefully stop off at a retail store, pick up 50 foot of speaker wire, and make our antenna with that uh, in the field. So uh, let's head off to the grocery to the uh, I would say to the grocery store to the retail store. So it's kind of interesting. <laughs> There's no better way to um, head to an activation site. Than, uh, to listen to the uh, ham radio workbench podcast and I'm doing that today as I head out and it was really nice I heard George uh, mention QRP or uh, dot com and say some really kind things about my videos I really appreciate that ham radio workbench is an excellent excellent podcast it is my favorite ham radio podcast and um, actually they're talking about antennas which is kind of ironic um, since we're going to put together a very simple antenna this morning. Though they're talking about directional antennas um, today, um, uh, but they've got a, a great one last uh, year just talking about um, embed antennas and simple wire antennas. So anyway, let's see if we can find some antenna wire, uh, maybe at Walmart. Okay, so here we are. Let's hope that Walmart has what we need. We'll go check the antenna section. So I haven't found anything yet, but I gotta say, when you look at some of these sections of the store where they have fasteners and things like that, man, there are a lot of antenna supplies here. I see some of this stuff like um, these little carabiners and things that can act as standoffs. There are tons of winders and rope here. They're pretty affordable. So don't forget about checking just a local retail store, hardware store, for supplies for antennas. Now let's see if we can find that. It's a while to find it, but I did find some. There's actually, this is 100 feet, which is twice more than I need. It's like $17, but it's 16 gauge, it's nice stuff. I think I'll go ahead and grab that and we'll make ourselves an antenna. Okay, here we are. We are now at uh, Lake James State Park. Um, I just picked out this site that I've actually used before. I think, in fact, the last time I was here, I used this very site and I like it. Um, I, uh, I put a line in the tree with my throw line. I didn't include that in the video. You've seen me do that before. In fact, you've seen me do that before at this very site. And it's not a perfect deployment. It's going through some uh, branches and things, but um, eh, it's good enough. And I've got my antenna cable here. And what we're going to do is actually a very, very simple antenna. And it works with radios like hopefully, like the X5105. I've never tried this with the X5105, so I don't really know, but basically um, uh, this is a wire, a random wire antenna that instead of having a separate like 4 to 1 transformer or 9 to 1 or something, uh, it just uses the antenna tuner to find the match. And uh, this is a great, really, really, really cheap way to get on the air um, and make a really simple antenna with a radio like this. Now, um, if you have a good antenna tuner, this will work. Um, it needs to be able to match quite a wide range, though, uh, to be able to do this. I can tell you that the Elecraft KX series radios, if you buy their antenna tuners, their inter internal antenna tuners, that I've found that they do a pretty good job matching these. 
Um, I've like I said, I've never tried the X5105, but based on my experience with the um, with another Yezu, or excuse me, uh, Zygu radio, I do believe that um, it stands a good chance of making this match, and I'm hoping it will. I really I don't want to be disappointed with this. I'd really like it to work. Um, and this cable, um, you know, this is not the cheap stuff. This is actually monster cable. You could go to, I tried even after I left Walmart, I tried a dollar store. Unfortunately, I didn't have any. Speaker cable is hard to find in just normal retail stores these days. And this is all they had was this kind of higher end monster cable. Um, and it's way more than I needed. So I paid like, you know, what, $17 or something with tax. Um, but hey, you look at the price of this and that's really very, very reasonable. And there's enough material here to make at least two antennas, uh, two full antenna systems. So I consider that a pretty good deal. So what we'll do now, I'll pull out some of the um, other accessories I brought. So I've got this, uh, people ask me about these. These are Tom Ben bags that I have here. These Tom Ben, they're called, this is a large travel tray. I'll have a link for this along with everything else in my um, activation um, field report on qrpr.com. But in here I brought um, how many um, you know notes about the uh, radiator length and radials. Even though I kind of know this, <laughs> I didn't want to come out here and forget and cut it to the wrong length. Um, I brought just a simple tape measure. This only goes to 25 feet and the radiator needs to be 28 and a half, but we'll make that work. I brought my wire cutters. Um, I brought some screwdrivers, some banana plugs. I'll just grab the bag. I don't only need two of these for this antenna. And I bought this thing. It has a few adapters in it, but it also has one of these BNC binding post things, which is what we're going to use because that will help us connect the antenna directly to the radio without using a feed line. So what I'll do now is go ahead and open this up. I won't include this in the video. I don't, you don't have to see this, but I'm going to open this up, stretch it out and uh, start doing some measurements. Okay, so what I've done here is opened up the box and this company very conveniently made it easy to pull out the uh, speaker wire. Now, um, I'm going to split this wire. I don't need to have two uh, conductors uh, together, of course, and we'll get a lot more. Basically, this makes it a 200 foot wire section. Um, and since one of my, since the radiator is going to be 28 and a half feet long, and I'll actually probably do it, you know, um, an inch longer than that to make a loop on the end, um, I'll measure it out. And what I've done is I've taken my tape measure and I've measured out 10 feet here. So I'll be able to quickly uh, figure out how long that is. <laughs> I'm not going to show this process right now, but uh, you'll just have to trust me. I'm measuring out exactly 28 and a half feet plus, like I said, an inch, maybe an inch and a half to loop the wire back around to make a place to hang the antenna. Uh, because I won't have an end insulator on this one. Um, so uh, just keep in mind, again, this is really high quality stuff. Um, Eric was even telling me before I did this, he likes using 16 gauge, and this is a really nice uh, wire. This should last a long time. The jacketing is very thick on it, um, and it should work, but just keep in mind, you're actually getting double the amount you buy because you're going to split this stuff apart. So um, here we go. I'll go ahead and measure. So enough. now measured out my 28 and a half feet, and I added, I think, an inch, inch and a half because I'm going to loop this like this once I'm done. But first I will take these wires and uh, split them apart. I don't need all that. So I'm going to go through the whole thing and do this so that I have two 28 and a half foot lengths. Okay, so now I've got two 28 and a half foot plus an inch and a half uh, sections of wire. Now, like I said, the counterpoise really only needs to be 17 feet long. I am hoping that even though it's longer than that, when it's coupled to the ground, it really won't matter too much. Um, so uh, we'll go for that. I think maybe longer will be okay. Uh, I think if it were elevated, um, that may actually work being the exact same length. So we'll give this a go. And you probably can't see this on the video, but one of these has a, a white stripe going down the jacket. Um, and that's the one I'll use as a uh, radiator and the other one I'll use as a counterpoise. So I'm just going to go in here and clip off the end of this. Let's see here is 16 gauge and I will not throw any of this stuff on the ground. Um, always pick up your litter. <laughs> okay, here we go. Throw that in my pocket. Those pieces. Now we got these ends. Now here's the part that is okay for the field. But for permanent installation, I would recommend doing something a little bit better. 
and that is I'm going to put on the uh, banana jacks. You know, I've never used this particular these particular ones before. I think I picked these up at a probably at a ham fest or something. Never opened them before. But the deal is, you have a little uh, place here to um, uh, unscrew and tighten up. Let's see, let me get this screwdriver. Ooh, it is warm and humid out here. It is so humid today. And I'm going to do my best to make this work. I really hope it does. I didn't check this in advance. Of course, just doing this in the field like I'm doing. I want to make sure it makes good uh, makes good contact in here. So I'll put this all the way in and then screw this down all the way with the hopes that whoops. Oh, I see how that's doing it. Mm, this could be a little challenging, but that's all right. I don't actually have to have these banana clips on there or these banana plugs. And I may not do that this time. The mana plugs just kind of make it fancy. <laughs> I am sweating up a storm. It is incredibly humid today. Okay, here we go. Let's try to get this thing to work. If not, I'll do it the old-fashioned way. Okay, I'll try this one more time. If this doesn't work, I'm just going to use it the old-fashioned way, which is basically without any kind of banana plug. This is normally the sort of thing you'd want to solder on. Okay, that's holding really well. There we go. Okay, that's good enough for the field right now. So I've got the radiator. Now I'm just going to do the same thing for the uh, ground. Okay, line. so now I have um, both a radiator and a counterpoise. These are on here really well. But frankly, when I get back home, I'll probably solder these in. Um, you don't have to have these because if you look at the uh, BNC jack here, the binding post adapter, you actually can open these up and put speaker wire directly into them and then close them up. And that works fine too. And in fact, that can work great um, as a field repair. If uh, one of these pops off or something in the field, you can do that. But you want to make sure you have good contact in here. I actually redid this one and uh, this one uh, by folding the wire over, sticking it in just to give it even more contact area with that um, screw that uh, holds it down. And I just made a little knot on the end of the line. This is an amazing one, but it should be enough that um, it'll hold the... Um, you know, hold the wire in the uh, in the tree with my arborist throw line. In fact, I'll go ahead and grab that right now and put it in here. This thing's all frayed on the end, isn't it? I'll just put a little bite in here, pull this line through. It's one of my favorite little knots. And if you look at my arborist throw line um, video, or not video, but my arborist throw line. Um, report, which will actually be linked in the uh, field report below. Uh, it's just the link to the Arborist Throw Line article I wrote many, many months ago. Um, I have a video showing how to make this really simple little knot. It's great because you can pull it out really quickly. It holds nicely for antennas and it works really well. So now let's get this thing up and uh, get the radio okay, out. Okay, I've got the radio back out and I kind of repositioned the antenna. I realized that I um, wasn't very pleased with how that uh, line went up in the tree. And the great thing about these arborist throw lines is it's so easy to just redo it. And so I did it and got an excellent branch, uh, the one I kind of wanted to get in the first place. So I did that. Uh, also moved over to the other side of the table here, um, remembering that the uh, BNC connector is on this side of the radio. Um, so I've got the X5105 out here. Sorry, there's a little bit of glare here, but that's just kind of the way it is today. Um, and I've got my QRP... Ranger, which is just basically an external battery. If you saw my video at uh, Lake Norman State Park when I had this out last, um, the reason I brought this, same reason I brought it today, this is still running off of a battery charge I did mid-May, uh, shortly after getting the radio. I charged the battery up all the way, and it is still running off the same charge. This is my fourth activation with that one battery charge. I am certain that it will not last beyond this one. Uh, if this takes more than 30 minutes, it's not going to last beyond this one probably. 
So um, I've got the QRP Ranger here. All I need to do, it's hooked up. I'll just flip on the on switch, and when that happens, it'll take the external battery source and also start charging the internal battery with that. So I've got it here as a backup. I'm pretty sure I will be using it today. Um, I can't believe how long the internal battery has lasted on this so far. I've, um, I think my first activation at Blue Ridge Parkway was kind of a normal length, maybe 30 minutes or something. I think the one that I did trail side at Tuttle was probably a 20 minute activation, but the one I did at uh, Lake Norman was, oh, I was over an hour and a half and uh, just full on going and it still it didn't deplete the battery. Um, but I think I'm down to like 10.2, 10.3 volts last I checked. I haven't even turned it on today to see. So I expect this battery, once it drops to 10 or below, it'll probably uh, turn off. But uh, here's what I did with the antenna wire. Now, this looks a little weird. I kept the banana jack on my ground but I didn't for my radiator. I just wasn't pleased with it. I was tugging on it and looking in there. I just didn't think it was great contact. So I pulled that thing off and I just did what I said I'd do before, which is um, set it up so it's directly connected there. And this actually makes an excellent, excellent connection. So you wouldn't have to have banana plugs on these um, at all. So here we go. Let's go ahead and plug this in. I have no clue, <laughs> no clue if it'll tune this up. I haven't turned on the radio. I have not uh, tried this out yet. Uh, you are with me live experiencing this. So my fingers are crossed because I don't want to have to recut something. I'd like for it to work. I want to start on 40 meters. Sounds like there's a little bit of noise here today. Okay, here we go. Well, that sounded positive. One to one. Excellent. Okay, at least we know we have a good match. Doesn't mean that we have an awesome antenna, and it is at 10.2 volts. You probably can't see that. Okay, let's see. Now I'm going to spot myself to the POTA network. I did not, I can't use the reverse beacon network to auto spot me today because I didn't make an announcement for this park. I did make an announcement for the park following this one if I'm able to go out to it today, which is South Mountains. There, I know I have no internet service, so I went ahead and set up the reverse beacon network. Um, or that I scheduled my spot with the POTA network for that one. Uh, the reason I don't do both is sometimes the spotting network gets a little confused when you do that, and I don't want it to send out the wrong park information. So I believe I am connected to the internet now here on my tablet uh, that's next to me, and I'm going to go to the POTA site, spot myself. I'll have to log in first. They've just redone the POTA site not long ago. And in a way, they've added a lot of functionality, but it's taking a little bit of time to get adjusted to the new format and everything. Oh, I need to set this up to menu five to do... Yeah, okay, I've got my CQ set up so I can hit this to do CQ. Okay. Let me just figure out how to spot myself on the new network. Here we go, add spot. I can maybe bring this over here. I don't know if you can see it all with all the glare and everything. but um, So it fills in my call sign information automatically because it knows I'm logged in. I'm going to put in my frequency 7063. Uh, park reference is K2739. K-2739. And it says I have to put something in the comments field. Um, I don't even know what to put in. I'm just going to put a blank in there. <laughs> okay. No, I'll put in CW. I don't know. Maybe that'll make a difference. Uh, spots mode will be set to CW. Oh, okay, yes. And that must be a part of the functionality. Here we go. Sorry, this is not very easy to view here, but let's go ahead and try this. And let me send a note to my buddy Mike so he knows where I am. Okay, we're down to 10.1 volts. I'm convinced I'm going to kill it this time. Very impressed with this battery, though. Now, the weird thing is when you're doing 
the CW memory key, and you can't see the SWR writing on this, but obviously it, it's doing okay because it was doing okay before. Okay, sorry, I'm just getting the logging done. Okay, I just learned that I can't turn down the volume while I'm <laughs> sending. Okay. So two so far on 40 meters, that's not bad. So I'm not putting as much information down here because I'm logging it on the side. Sorry, on the side, I'm trying to figure out why my log is not auto-populating the SIG info field. Ugh, I may be messing this up. Something's not quite right. That's not quite right with my log, but eh, you have to have my SIG info and SIG info, and for some reason it's just not doing it correctly. I'll have to fix that afterwards. I've got three down. Well, we know this antenna works. And let's see. If we look at the fact that we could build at least two full antennas. I can't even get all that.
Okay, I think that was it. I I blanked out there just a second. I hope I didn't miss something that this uh, op sent. <laughs> you can let me know in the comments. That's one of the great things about being able to see a recording of it. Because you can kind of go back through it, but... You could see that they they were about a 559, and then uh, there's some definitely some fading going on today because the QSB kind of took down their signal at one point. We are at 9.9 .9 volts. Hmm. I wonder what my output of power is. can't believe how quiet this park is today, but that goes to show you, like, a Monday morning, this is just not a busy time to be at a park, even in the summer. Got him. K4OCY. I've had you in the logs before. They're in Tennessee. So again, I'm not writing down the time here because it's keeping track of that on my um, uh, logging software. And um, I'll have a picture of that. I'll, I've got everything in here, so I'm not too worried about that this time. Since I have internet access here, I'll also try... Oh, I haven't had... Well, I had him, I think, last time. Really, I like uh, I like your uh, call sign there, K zero L A F. CW Memory King, so handy. I just wish the X5105, Scott uh, uh, Can3A was also talking about this in his sort of field review of this radio. It'd be so nice if they had just three or four push buttons to automatically do CW Memory King as opposed to, they have 10 slots, you can put 10 messages in, but really, practically, you can only use one of them at a time unless you're willing to toggle through, and that's kind of frustrating. Okay.
So like that, we've got eight contacts. Not bad. Okay. Nice call sign. I suspect what's happened with, um, I suspect what's happened with the other, um, <laughs> well, it makes a big difference. Um, I expect what happened with the other, with the AA call is QSB took it down where they couldn't hear me come back to them. Okay, for NYM.
It's nice to work K4NYM. That is one of the most active activators. Okay. Aha! <laughs> come on, come on! Okay, gotta turn this back on. Oh no! Oh no, come on! You're really off on me here. That's what I get for doing this. It dies on me as I'm trying to do a contact. <laughs> Okay, so that's K3. I, after uh, they said their state, I think, was New York, um, I thought, ah, I don't have that 4 right in there. Uh, so I'm glad they came back to me. Thank you for coming back to me like that, although I would have checked it out in the video. I put a question mark next to it. It's one of the great things about doing a video is you can do that. So now you can see here, the uh, QRP Ranger actually shows you how many amps something's drawing. Whoops, whoops, I've got to set this up all the way. That's interesting. Since it died like that, it didn't keep any of the settings. Okay, that's it. So you can see what it's using in terms of its amperage when it's keying and when it's resting. Actually, this is not a good example of resting because it's also charging the batteries. It's using a maximum amount of amperage doing that. I'm getting out of my rhythm here. <laughs> so I've got 13 contacts. I have a valid activation already, but I really want to move up to 30 and 20 just to see if this thing will tune up on it. You know what? I am... <laughs> what did I say? Okay, here we go. Let's move this up. Let's see if anybody's where I like. You know what? And I see there's like a little bit of a bend in the antenna there. I'm going to pull that up a bit. Which is easy to do because I've just got it sitting right here. Now we got like a perfect vertical. There we go. Okay, let's see. Will it tune this? Let's try it out. So we're on 30 meters now. Now I need to turn this off so I can see. Let 
That's showing power output, and SWR is light nil. How rude of me to tune up on out of frequency and then ask URL. I <laughs> should have done it the opposite, but here we go. Okay, let's see here. Now that I'm on the spots, I bet you it'll spot me if I just... Oh, whoops, that's right. I've got to change this now to Digi. Now it'll do it. There's a PTT button up here I'm hitting, and that's what initiates the um, keying. If I had the microphone plugged in right now, I'd probably do that as well. These are probably dancing all around on your screen right now, and they're not doing that in real life. That's just the flicker rate kind of conflicting with the, uh, uh, you know, the frame rate of the uh, camera. If that's annoying, I may just turn it this way, because I think you've probably seen about what it's doing right now. I'll move it away so it's not too annoying. I need to try some single sideband too. I actually brought my microphone with me this time. So obviously the ATU in this is pretty darn good. Now this would perform a whole lot better if I had like three radials, um, and that's what Eric uses is three 17-foot radials um, that he uses stacking banana plug binder post things. And all right. KG8HZ. Good to have you in the logs. So pretty weak on his end. By the way, I got a new um, Osmo Action Camera, uh, this one I decided on, and I have it, I just don't have the right tripod for it to do this sort of thing. I'm going to do a test with it um, shortly, though, to see how um, how well that'll work, actually, from a tabletop tripod and from my normal tripod here. I need to find a better tripod than this one. This is actually not a very good one. Okay, you know what I'm going to do? Now, normally I'd hang around on the band a little bit longer, but I'm kind of curious. This is a park that everybody's worked. Well, 
I'll do one more because I hear somebody tuning up, maybe trying to get me. So, but the but this park is um, it's not rare. <laughs> Else I'd hang around a lot longer on each band. <clears throat> I'm just curious if it'll tune up on 20 and where else it'll tune up. <clears throat> Excuse me. It is incredibly humid out here today. Can you feel it through the video? <laughs> it's, it's incredibly humid. It's not actually that um, hot today. It's just very humid. And I'm sweating because of that. Uh, the other day I was listening to my... I'm going to send one more CQ. I don't know if that was somebody else that was calling in. But <clears throat> I was at Lake Norman, and I heard myself huffing and puffing just going up and down this little hill. And I thought, man, what's wrong? Well, the humidity that day was so much that it was like being underwater. Um, <laughs> Sorry, I'm having a hard time hearing this for some reason. He's coming back to me. QRZ question mark just means like a general who's calling me sort of thing. I can't hear them. You probably could through the video, but I unfortunately here live, I'm not able to catch up with that very well. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and move up. Sorry, whoever that is, if you're trying to get me, it could just be that QSB is kind of kicking it out there. So I am not actually going to call CQ on 20 meters. I want to see if uh, it'll tune this. I'm going to go to some weird frequency here. Here we go. There we go. Yep. One to one. So the thing about a random wire antenna, you don't want to cut just any length. You want this to be a non-resonant length. You don't want it to be resonant on any band uh, that you're using. So there are actually very set um, lengths that you can cut a random wire, and uh, if you go by those, you'll do a pretty good job of making a, a you know a great nice random wire antenna. Let's see if it'll tune up 17 meters. I always do that because this is kind of backwards. I'm going to go at a little bit of an off frequency here. We'll give it a go. It's having to work a little harder. Oh, wait. One to one. Okay. Uh, let's try going up one more. That is an upper side band. I'm just going to tune it anyway here. I'm not too worried about somebody being on that frequency. <laughs> Look at that. And now let's go up. There we go. Also, getting it in there really well. I always do that. They uh, they put these buttons backwards. This is up volume. This is down volume. This is up here on this side and down on this side. And your brain just wants this to be up and this to be down. So at least my brain does. My brain doesn't function well without a lot of coffee, by the way. So I appreciate all the kind coffee contributions you guys have done. It's pretty amazing. You guys are awesome. Let's see. Oh, look at that, 10 meters. Now let's see if 6 meters is doable. Yep. <laughs> Golly. Okay. Now, uh, just to continue on here, 
I doubt this is going to be the case, but let's try... Let's make sure nobody's here. I'll be shocked if it does anything below 40 because, well, even if it does, it'll be a very inefficient antenna because um, that's a hard match and it's not a, a length that works really well with this. Well, I'll be. I got a one-to-one -one match on that. Gosh, it's a nice antenna. <laughs> I, put, I had to put $17 into this antenna. Okay. Okay, let's go to 35. There'll be nobody here right now. I don't expect it to get this. This is way out of bounds here. What? Are you serious? No. Oh, uh, look. No, I don't think it's doing that. I think that this one is not, it did not get a good match. You could hear it working. This is not designed for 80 meters. That's the reason I did this. But probably in a pinch, I could use it. Um, if I had a much longer wire, I could do, um, I could find a nice random wire length for 80 meters and do everything uh, if I wanted to. But that would make for a really long antenna. And frankly, I don't use 80 meters enough in the field to justify that. So... Okay, let's give a little voice a go here. I promised you guys I'd start doing a little bit more single sideband. This time I'll actually use my microphone. Last time I just used the microphone built into the radio, which worked really well, actually. Oh, I better tune up. Is this frequency in use? Actually, that's a pretty good... It's got a good match already. Someone is tuning up on me. Of course, how long have I been here now? Uh, let's see. Let's try. Okay, what I'm doing here on the side is I'm checking really quickly to see if there are any spots um, out there on the POTA network that could maybe work. If you're a good POTA op, actually what you do is if you have internet service, you go through and you do your hunting first. Go around, hunt your uh, sites, and go from there. But unfortunately, <laughs> I never think about doing it when I'm doing my videos. It's weird. When I do my videos, I have this kind of... I don't know what you call it, like a sort of workflow, and um, and I forget some of the things I do when I'm operating, you know, on my own. Um, one of them is hunting. I don't think about it for some reason when I'm doing videos, and I think it's because I'm focused on my own operation so much I just forget to do it. But when I'm operating alone and I'm just, I'm not recording it, um, usually, and especially, I use that a lot when I'm using like my Elecraft KX1 or one of those that I have to hook an external speaker up to it. Those are the ones I use when I'm just going out on my own. I just use some earphones. And I'll often just kind of forget. I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll forget when I'm doing a video and I won't forget when I'm um, um, on my own. Let's see here. Did I get AB9? Uh, I'm being told that this is probably not going to work well. Ooh, let's see if I can get 14. Okay, I'm going to lie here and go up to... Uh, let's go up to the CW frequency. Let's see if I can hear... 30. Uh, let's see here. This is somewhere in here, maybe VE2 WLD. Now oh, they've got some kind of noise off to the side. See if I've notched them out now. First time I've used notch on this. I can't hear the uh, CW station though, unfortunately. Regardless. 
Oh well, I thought I'd try then. Let's try... Let's see who else is here that I could try to get that would make sense. 7207. Uh, they're in South Carolina. That could be a little challenging. 7207. So we hear anybody. And uh, Mike just told me that the BZ went south, which means that our propagation window is kind of not, not where we'd like it right now. Conditions are pretty unstable. I'm just kind of checking through here and trying to find... Anybody else who may be on the bands before I call CQ? And I may not call CQ for terribly long. Conditions are pretty darn bad. Okay, let's see. I don't see anyone. Let's see if there's anybody here on 7188. That's sort of a common POTA frequency. Is this frequency in use? can't remember if I, that's the last place I tuned up. Is this frequency in use? This is K4SWL. CQ Poda, CQ Poda, this is Kilo 4, Sierra, Whiskey Lima, calling CQ for Parks on the Air. CQ Poda, CQ Poda, this is Kilo 4, Sierra, Whiskey Lima, calling CQ for Parks on the Air. CQ Poda, CQ Poda, this is Kilo 4, Sierra, Whiskey Lima, calling CQ for Parks on the Air. CQ Poda, CQ Poda, this is Kilo 4, Sierra, Whiskey Lima, calling CQ for Parks on the Air. CQ Poda, CQ Poda, this is Kilo 4, Sierra Whiskey Lima calling CQ for Parks on the Air. CQ Poda, CQ Poda, this is Kilo 4, Sierra Whiskey Lima calling CQ for Parks on the Air. November 2, India Golf Whiskey. You've got a great signal, about 5x7, five 5x7 by seven, five by seven here at park number 2739. QSL? QSL, we're 5'7", you're 5'5 five five in New York. 73, thanks for the activation. Thank you, sir. Uh, and you have yourself a wonderful day. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. And you have yourself a wonderful week. Thanks for uh, hunting me here today. And uh, enjoy the rest of your week. 73's QRZ, this is Kilo 4, Sierra Whiskey Lima for Parks on the Air. CQ Poda, CQ Poda, this is Kilo 4, Sierra Whiskey Lima calling CQ for Parks on the Air. CQ Poda, CQ Poda, this is Kilo 4, Sierra Whiskey Lima calling CQ for Parks on the Air. CQ Poda, CQ Poda, this is Kilo 4, Sierra Whiskey Lima calling CQ for Parks on the Air. CQ Poda, CQ Poda, this is Kilo 4, Sierra, Whiskey Lima, calling CQ for Parks on the Air. So when I was using the notch earlier, this has a manual notch, not an auto notch. Auto notches would notch out all that noise, you know, automatically. And unless this has an auto notch, and I don't know it, or it, it, maybe it could be added later, I don't know. CQ Poda, CQ Poda, this is Kilo 4, Sierra, Whiskey Lima, calling CQ for Parks on the Air. CQ Poda, CQ Poda, this is Kilo 4, Sierra Whiskey Lima calling CQ for Parks on the Air. CQ Poda, CQ Poda, this is Kilo 4, Sierra Whiskey Lima calling CQ for Parks on the Air. Well, you can hear how noisy the band is now. CQ Poda, CQ Poda, this is Kilo 4, Sierra Whiskey Lima calling CQ for Parks on the Air.
Sikupoda, Sikupoda, this is Kilo 4, Sierra Whiskey Lima, calling CQ for Parks on the Air. Sikupoda, Sikupoda, this is Kilo 4, Sierra Whiskey Lima, calling CQ for Parks on the Air. CQ Poda, CQ Poda, this is Kilo 4, Sierra Whiskey Lima, calling CQ for Parks on the Air. CQ Poda, CQ Poda, this is Kilo 4, Sierra Whiskey Lima, calling CQ for Parks on the Air. CQ Poda, CQ Poda, this is Kilo 4, Sierra Whiskey Lima, calling CQ for Parks on the Air. <laughs> ants, flying ants, everything all around me right now. I got stung by something on my back on the way over here, by the way, and that's been kind of annoying. Turns out sweat and stings don't go well together. CQ Poda, CQ Poda, this is Kilo 4, Sierra Whiskey Lima, calling CQ for Parks on the Air. K3, Sugar Echo Whiskey. You've got a great signal. It's about 5x5 five five here, uh, just with a lot of uh, noise, a lot of QRN today. Um, here at park number 2739, QSL. Your report is 5x5, five five, almost about a 5x7, QSL. Did you catch that? About a 5x7, five 5x7 by seven, five by seven here at Park 2739 in North Carolina. QSL? Okay, three, sure. Echo, is yeah, yeah, you sound a lot better. You're, you're about up to uh, an S9 now, uh, so you're sounding great. Roger, Roger, you're about a 5x9, five 5x9. By nine, five by nine. I think there's some QS Baker going on, probably knocking out some of my exchange here. Roger, Roger, thank you very much for the 4-4. Four, four. Uh, I appreciate it. And 7-3s. Uh, What's my report? My report? You are 5x7, five 5x7, by 5x7, seven, five by seven, five by seven. QSL? Uh, the county is, um, I believe, I'm in McDowell County, McDowell County, North Carolina. It's either McDowell or Burke, but I'm pretty sure it's McDowell. Hey, uh, I hear thank you for the phone, uh, Roger, Roger, thank you very much for the contact. Seven threes, and have yourself a wonderful week. Um, QRZ, this is Kilo 4, Sugar Whiskey Lima for Parks on the Air. Kilo 8, <laughs> Kilo 8, Romeo, Alpha, Tango. Man, I'll tell you what, Mike, you're sounding great. You're sounding about as great as normal here. I'm just using a little speaker wire antenna I put together. You're about a 5 by 8 or so uh, here with, of course, a lot of QRN and things. QSL? Roger, Roger. Yeah, it's very, very noisy here as well. Hey, thank you so much for the contact. I'm going to call 7-3s here myself and uh, go QRT and go do a little hiking. Thanks so much for the spots. 7-3s, my friend. QRZ, this is Kilo 4, Sugar Whiskey Lima with one more call. Okay, nothing heard. This is Kilo 4, Sugar Whiskey Lima. I am QRT, QRT. Ooh, I got a total of 17 contacts, 17, three single sideband, most of them on 40 meter CW and one 30 meter CW. Okay, 17, not bad. 7-3s, my friend. I think I will move on to uh, South Mountain State Park. Uh, I will not have internet access out there, so any spotty activity you can give me would be great. Um, I'm probably going to take a hike here before I go there, though, so it's going to be maybe 2 o'clock in the afternoon or so. Seven threes. K four S W L clear. And we'll call that an activation. 
Mike's a great guy. If you are in Parks on the Air and do any activations, you have no doubt probably been worked by Mike. He is one of the top hunters, I think fourth all time, and a super nice guy, very, very good friend. Um, I've known now for a long time. He was my original Elmer uh, in... Um, ham radio actually it was uh, i have him to blame and also my friend eric wdarif for not only getting me into field radio stuff i was always interested in the outdoors and radios i guess but they put the two together and so my very earliest memories of doing anything with um uh, with radio was in the field with those guys and that's one of the reasons i think i love field radio so very much um so um if you live somewhere and you've gotten your ham radio license and you haven't gotten out yet, I really encourage you to go to a club or something and meet people because, frankly, that's where you normally get the opportunity to go out and try things. I feel like parks on the air and even summits on the air are things that you can do on your own without you know, having someone show you how to do it. But it is awfully fun when you go out and play radio with somebody else there. And uh, what I often do, like with some of my friends, um, I've done this with Eric, my buddy Vlado, and other people, my friend Mike, um, I'll go out and uh, we'll operate at the same park, different frequencies, and we just make sure we're not on the same bands at the same time. We give each other a little separation so that we don't interfere with each other. And it's awfully fun to do that. Um, anyway, um, thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I'm just going to roll this antenna up and uh, tie it up. Uh, be done with it. And I think I'm going to head on to another park here today if I get a chance. I'm, I'm going to take about a two and a half or three mile uh, hike here at this park before I leave. And so we'll see how that goes. If it, uh, if I've got enough time and I feel like it, I, and it's not, there's no thunderstorm. There is, they're calling for isolated thunder showers uh, today, which is the reason I'm not doing a summit activation today, <laughs> because it would have been about the time I hit the summit that I was looking at. So um, if there's a thunderstorm, then I'm not going to activate this afternoon. Uh, but thank you so much for hanging with me. I really appreciate it. I will tell you that I did buy this X5105. Um, I may have posted something about that already. Um, I like this radio. I think it's it's a really cool uh, it's a really cool radio. Um, and I wanted to add it to my um, field arsenal because a lot of people ask me questions about it. And frankly, I liked having it. I'm going to keep this thing packed up and in my car at all times. So I'll always have a radio with me. Very, very pleased with the battery life. It's not a perfect radio, but this is a $550 radio. And I kind of feel like it's, um, even for beginners, people interested in QRP or field radio, this has everything you need in one box. You see here that I have this radio, this uh, connector here, which these are, three or four dollars probably and then i have 17 dollars worth of speaker wire that you could probably you don't even have to go buy it you probably have wire at home um but this is like the highest quality speaker wire even um and we just hopped on the air with that we didn't need anything else um i only have this external battery power because uh, i wanted to push this battery this internal battery to the limits which i did uh so and this made it through i i don't know if i had a valid activation yet or not uh by the time uh, the battery died but um, I'm very pleased with this radio. So Radio Oddity, who sent this to me on loan, I contacted them and I told them I was interested in the radio and I could pay them for it. And I offered them another option, which is the one they took. They were, um, they are a sponsor over at my other blog, the SWLing Post, and um, they have an ad. And their ad was coming up for renewal uh, before long. So basically, I gave them an equivalent amount of the full price of this radio and ad. So instead of them sending me a check, uh, I just extended their ad for the exact same amount as the full market price of the radio, so for $550. And um, that worked out pretty well. Um, and uh, I appreciate them working with me on this. Uh, it is one of the uh, hazards of doing reviews as you kind of sometimes uh, become smitten with some radios. And <laughs> I like this one. I don't know why I like it. I've got better radios, but I like this radio. It works really well, and I just think it's a nice utilitarian uh, little field radio. So... Thank you so much for people who uh, encouraged me to check this one out. And uh, we may, maybe I'll use my speaker wire antenna at the next uh, uh, activation. Uh, we'll see. Uh, anyway, thank you very much. If you feel like it, um, subscribe and uh, take care and enjoy, uh, enjoy your field activations. If you go out or enjoy hunting or just enjoy a little time outdoors uh, here in the next few weeks and clear your head uh, with Mother Nature. <laughs> take care and seven threes.